You know, doing a migration from 3G to 4G, and then uh, you know, going into phones or to tablets or even clamshell devices, or even uh, enabling connectivity at home with things like your uh, smart TVs and set-top boxes uh, with Wi-Fi and power line. Making these devices connected and smart is, uh, is one of the key things we, uh, we work very hard at Qualcomm. And uh, one of the challenges you know, in, uh, in making these connected devices is if you look at smartphones, you know, there's an apps processor. And uh, you know, typically, the apps processor is the one that, uh, that runs your high-level operating system, you know, does your camera function, and all the various uh, things that you, uh, that you use your uh, device to do. One of the key industry challenges for apps processors is that uh, people who use smartphones expect quite a bit from them. And I'll say a little bit about it. Uh, you know, particularly in India, for example, many people probably the first smartphone they buy, or even the first mobile they buy, they buy is probably the first digital camera they've ever used. So the expectation of what the smartphone has to do is very different. Uh, it's probably the first MP3 player. It's probably the first to probably connect to internet more times on the phone and do web browsing than, than on a PC. And they expect this device to act like a, a PSP or a game machine and, uh, and, and use it for gaming and the, do email. And as you saw today, the announcement from, uh, from Map My India folks on the whole uh, navigation aspect of, uh, of, the, of the device and what they expect that to do. Most people wouldn't have gotten a GPS navigation system at home and then converted to this, like in some other countries. Here, the very first experience would be on devices that, uh, that a smartphone uh, provides. And the challenge with that is, is the expectation of what the device should do is really high. You know, people want to use the camera, take pictures, share them, listen to music, but at the end of the day, it still needs to have enough battery so that you can make a phone call and use it for other things. So this really do, you know, leads a, a, a different approach and, and a smarter approach to, to enable those kind of experiences to happen. The other big thing that's happening is, uh, is the whole concept of HD video. As you, as you might be able to see in the, uh, the experience zone, you can now play and record full 1080p HD on, on your mobile phone. In fact, you can play full 1080p HD and record it and even watch it on a web browser. Let's say you go into YouTube and type in uh, 1080p and you show up a 1080p video trailer and now you're actually playing a full 1080p clip in Adobe Flash inside a web browser. Most PCs would actually not be able to do that, but you can actually do that on, uh, on quite a few of the Snapdragon-based uh, smartphones. So that, that requires a lot of processing and a lot of technology. OK, I'll try not to I'll move to this side. <laughs> it's a little scary out there. But, uh, but you know, the other thing uh, that people expect to do is gaming. Gaming has become a huge, a huge um, you know, mobile gaming uh, application. You know, I, I saw a spec the other day that 65% uh, of all apps downloaded last quarter uh, on you know, iTunes and Android Marketplace are actually games. So that's a staggering number. So really doing mobile gaming well is, is a key part of this. So uh, what we do at, uh, at Qualcomm is to, uh, is to really design the Snapdragon processor as a complete solution. And we do it as a complete solution that adapts the real-time demands of the customers. So users can do everything that they want to do and still have the battery life that they desire. And how do we do that? You know, Paul mentioned this a little bit in the beginning. We actually build all the key components that go inside a Snapdragon. For example, we design the CPU from ground up. We license the instruction set from ARM, but then we implement it and we do make custom transistors that actually get the best power performance out of them. We design our own GPUs. We do our own video engines and we build the camera that uh, the demo that Paul showed today. And, uh, and we actually have a high performance DSP in there that does all your audio functions. We then put all that together into one package with a great you know, 3G or 4G modem and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and connectivity. And in addition to that, we make the RF, you know, the GPS and the power management and everything that goes around the device. So we provide a total chipset. And what that does is that lets the users have a complete system approach to their solutions. Our OEMs appreciate the fact that we provide a total system. 
And that gives us the ability to really manage the power performance and deliver that end user experience that I was talking about, where people want their smartphone to be an integration of all the consumer electronic devices that they've grown to use in life, and maybe the one device that they carry with them all the time. You know, it reminds me of this joke. Somebody asked me once, uh, what's the best camera you have out there? And, uh, and uh, it's probably an old joke, but I think it really uh, rings well. You know, they said that it's the best camera out there is the camera you have with you. So that's actually true with the smartphones. It's a focus, a camera you have with you all the time. And when we stand out here and see how many people are shooting pictures with the smartphones versus having cameras by yourself, you can see that, uh, that we're actually changing the landscape of how people use these devices. The other thing we do is to, is to really be able to provide this great experience all the way from the high end of the smartphone market to actually the, the low tier of the smartphone market. And we're able to do that because uh, we integrate and provide the cost effectiveness. So Snapdragon processors, uh, you know, as I mentioned, if you, if you rip up one of these Snapdragon, Snapdragon processors and see what's inside that, we have quite a few things. You know, one of them is, uh, you know, as I talked about multimedia, we have the navigation and the GPS. We have the GPU that's purpose built uh, for actually doing uh, mobile gaming. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. The CPUs will be designed from scratch. Uh, there is a high performance digital signal processor that's dedicated to doing great audio. If you actually listen to audio on some of these, uh, these phones with a pair of headsets, you'll hear full surround audio uh, on the headset. And, and to do that, there's a tremendous amount of process, signal processing that gets done. And we do the signal processing in our DSP, uh, which we build from scratch. Uh, and of course, the modem, the connectivity, we talked quite a bit about that. Uh, and also the high level operating system. We support a, a whole host of operating systems. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And each of them have their own, uh, own uh, ecosystems and advantages. And the RF and the power management that pulls together the entire uh, Snapdragon chipset. So uh, I'll take a few minutes to actually talk to you about Snapdragon Roadmap. This is a, this is a branding uh, effort that we have uh, put together recently. And one of the key reasons for, uh, for this is uh, Snapdragon has been really successful in the marketplace. As a result of that, we've launched a whole host of Snapdragon processors, all the way from low end to high end. And uh, just in our dual core Snapdragon processor, we have close to 10 variations of that. Uh, so, so we decided to simplify the roadmap for our OEMs and the customers and the partners. And what we decided to do is uh, put these chipsets in, in categories. So the S1 you know, series of Snapdragon processors is basically for the mass market smartphones. And, uh, and, uh, you know, and then when you go one step above that, uh, it's the higher performance smartphones, which is the S2 class products. And the Sony Xperia Play, for example, uses the S2. And the S3 uh, is a really a dual core, high performance, multitasking, and advanced gaming platform. And the HTC Sensation, for example, uses the S3. And we're actually really proud to talk about our S4 device, uh, which is the uh, 8960, which is the first product. And that will be the world's first integrated LTE plus a smartphone plus an AP all in one package. And uh, we expect to see products based on that uh, you know, early, uh, early next year, the first half of next year. And those are actually the four, uh, four ones. And as I mentioned, there's over 30 processors in that, uh, in that uh, uh, classification. I'll say a little bit more about this. Uh, so the S1 processor are actually 65 nanometers and uh, up to a gigahertz CPU. And uh, you know, the S2 class processors, you know, we can run the CPU up to 1.4 gigahertz at still at extremely low power because we designed these things from scratch, as I mentioned. Uh, the S3s are dual cores, and I listed a few specs here. This is the one that actually will do full 1080p encode and decode, and uh, you'll see some more announcements on that product today. And uh, as I mentioned, really excited by S4. And S4 actually has our uh, next generation CPU called Crate, and that CPU has the capability to run up to two and a half gigahertz per core. If you think about the class of processing we are putting into these, uh, it's very, very impressive. And we actually announced a quad core version of that processor uh, earlier in the year, which, uh, which we'll be sampling the uh, early part of next year. Now, when you make those kind of products, it gives us uh, this tremendous global breadth and execution scale from smartphones to tablets. As you know, there's uh, 250 in design and uh, 20 other tablets on the way. And uh, you know, there are around uh, 10 tablet models and 40 plus more designed here in, uh, in, uh, in the works. So really excited about the traction of Snapdragon and all the great products that, uh, that you'll be seeing this year and next year. <laughs> now, in India, uh, smartphones are growing really fast. And as, uh, as some other people mentioned, there's actually more smartphones sold in 2010 
uh, than, uh, than PCs, than laptops. Now, I, I think that is just one aspect of it. Now, if you look at things like digital cameras, MP3 players, home audio systems, and entertainment devices, if you aggregate them, I believe the smartphones will soon uh, you know, be able to drive much greater volume as people use these for lots of those other devices, and they would just buy a smartphone instead of buying a camera and an MP3 player and a navigation system. And therein lies the real, uh, real potential of uh, where we see this market. And these are just a list of uh, products. Really, really uh, happy to be able to show this list here in front of you guys, uh, you know, both in 09 and 010. Lots of products from, uh, from all our partners, from HTC to, uh, to Sony Ericsson to Dell, and I've listed them here. And uh, over 25 products now launched here. And uh, the list is uh, constantly growing. Say a little bit about LTE. Uh, a lot of people talked about LTE today. And uh, you know, we are, have great leadership position in LTE. And one of the advantages of this is uh, when we talk about cutting it multimedia, when you talk about streaming 1080p video and, uh, and watching it on your phone, and when you get things like wireless display to happen, where you're able to just put your phone here, download a, you know, a content from, you know, over your LTE network at full HD, and then play it on the TV, then that's when you see the power of having, having that high performance, uh, you know, uh, high bandwidth link. And, uh, you know, and we are very proud with, uh, uh, with the LTE product, you know, launches that we have made this year, both in, uh, both, you know, in respect to uh, a fusion kind of device, where we connect an LTE modem together with uh, one of our older APs, uh, are, are, and then you know integrated LTE devices that will be coming up uh, coming up next year. So um, we spend a lot of time on uh, supporting many many different operating systems. Uh, you know oh, you know BlackBerry OS, Windows Phone, and Android. And if you actually look at uh, Android, uh, we've launched over 200 plus devices uh, with Android, and uh, 30 plus manufacturers now shipping. Um, it's been uh, it's been a great. Uh, it's been a great partnership, and we're very happy with, uh, with the results we've been able to achieve there. I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, gaming. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, gaming is going to be the next big, uh, next big experience on smartphones. And, and to do that, you really need a really high-performance GPU. And I, and I believe that uh, as we develop and as we get high-performance Snapdragon product processors with OpenGL type standards into tablets and smartphones, and as we enable things like Wi-Fi display, we will be migrating console class gam gaming that you play on your Xbox 360 or, or a PS3 onto your smartphones and onto your, uh, onto your tablets. And to do that, uh, we developed this Adreno GPU, which is, uh, which is our uh, high performance graphics processing engine, together with a quad core crate, which is our CPU. And we put that together. And we can actually, there is some demos, if you guys haven't seen, in the, in the experience zone, where we're actually playing these uh, games in full 3D. So if you have a 3D TV, you can connect your phone to that and play a game in full 3D off your phone. Uh, to even think such a thing is possible a few years ago would have been you know, a stretch, but that's what we're able to do today. And when you couple that with LTE, what you're able to do is you're able to extend that gaming experience through a high performance, high bandwidth multiplayer. So all different people could be in different locations, and uh, it, it takes the whole online gaming experience to a different level when you have that class of GPU and, uh, and LTE coupled in one product. Uh, there's a lot of other new technologies coming in that we're very excited about. Uh, we're working on gestures, where you'll be able to uh, control your smartphone or a tablet without actually physically touching the device, uh, because it has the ability to recognize the kind of uh, technology that you see, uh, the kind of functionality that you see in things like Microsoft Connect, but we'll be able to get those onto, uh, onto these devices. We spent a lot of time with uh, a whole bunch of uh, game developers through the year, and uh, we actually had them working on this one, which is our uh, Snapdragon mobile development platform. It's a platform that for all the developers out here in the audience, you can get access to pretty easily, and then you can optimize your applications on this one, uh, which uses our uh, S3 class processor, and when we do launch products with S3 and S4, all your apps will already be optimized and come seamlessly onto the OEM devices. And that's how we've got all these uh, 100 plus games optimized, and they're launching in, uh, in various devices now. So, uh, so uh, in summary, uh, really build the Snapdragon process with the purpose in mind, which is for mobile, but still provide you that great consumer electronics class experience and that great computing platform uh, so no compromise on, uh, on battery life, no compromise on uh, internet browsing. And uh, really figured out a way to integrate all of the CE devices into one, 
and we will continue to do that moving forward uh, as new and new functionalities uh, needs come out. Unmatched in system integration, that's kind of been uh, what has helped us quite a bit because uh, that helps us drive the cost down, that helps us drive the technology all the way from the high end of the smartphone to the low end of the smartphone, but still do it in a software compatible manner. So when an OEM chooses or an app developer chooses to write an app at one of the higher end platforms, they're able to drive it down all the way into the low cost product. Um, and again, a wider support of the OS. OS is out there and uh, integrated LTE, and I touched upon the advanced uh, mobile graphics. So I'll be around for the rest of the day. If you guys have any questions in Snapdragon, I'd be uh, glad to answer. Thank you very much.